Well, good day, everyone. Welcome to a Bulldog edition of Extra Point. Our guest, uh, Bulldog head football coach Ryan Norse. Ryan, welcome back into the studio. It's good to be here. So it's not smoky in here, too, either. So that's that's one good thing. Yeah, that was crazy yesterday how it rolled in and still is uh, out there. And there's some of the impacts it has. You know, I suffer from some allergies and that, and so do a lot of the players and other coaches. So it's just another thing, you know, when you... When your job is outside, it's no different than anybody else who works outside. You know, you just, you got to take some of the goods with the bads and take care of yourself. And some days are tougher than others. So I'm sure Russ Richardson, you, you talk to him and, and talk about air quality and stuff be, before you practice. Sure. Plan your practices. Yeah, most of the time we were usually within that uh, good range. but uh, And we were fine yesterday, but, you know, it's just, it's just something to deal with in the fall here. Okay, so uh, 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 disappointing win on the road to Eastern Eastern Oregon. Uh, um, at listening to the game and stuff like that, and you were there, so you can correct me on this, but it seems like that little stretch prior to halftime uh, was a momentum factor. Well, momentum is such a big deal in the game uh, of football and most competitive competitive sports, and uh, to have a swing like that was um, was pretty devastating to. Uh, to our psyche, I believe, but uh, that's something too that you have to get through because every every game ebbs and flows, and uh, those were big swings. And uh, but you know that we talk about an R factor. You know your your R has to be bigger than your E. You know your response has to be bigger than the event. And I think for some of the guys it wasn't, and then it just trickled into that second half, and we just made mistake after mistake again and and just uh it was hard to come back from that's a that's a good team and we certainly weren't on our um we weren't at our best well like one of the things we talked about last week was the timing and special teams as far as the kicking game it seemed like i mean you didn't miss an extra point so it seems like that one thing which in the long run is a very important thing was cleaned up yeah we were we were good on our timing and everything was uh you know we did we did well there and we improved in in most areas that we looked at improving as we talked about uh last week except for just a few just some of the details in terms of execution and that's what really matters when you're playing a team that you are um that's as good as you are maybe you're as equal to talent wise and and they play a very similar style of football that that we do you know where their guys are tough and physical and they play really hard and really fast and give great effort and you you, you have to you've got to have your uh t's crossed and your eyes dotted and, and in a lot of spots we did not well and uh, coach good's uh, defense played well uh, against the run held them way under their rushing totals Yes, I mean we're we're going to be very stout against the run. We have a very um, strong and physical defensive line. Uh, we were, you know, a little surprised and disappointed that we weren't able to pressure the passer like we were the week before. Um, and then we we had a little lapse in coverage and some of the stuff that uh, we need to take care of. Uh, and uh, in the secondary, and again, it's a uh, it's just an execution issue of, of what we need to do and uh, maybe not being quite ready enough for um, for the intensity of, of playing a, a really good football team in, a, in an environment where they're, they're very competitive. So does the road trip, uh, you had mentioned the lengthy road trip, you stopped in, I believe it was Boise, and or you, anyway, you stopped along the way, had practice and stuff like that. So you, you can't say that the, or can you say, that that long road trip in fact i figured it out it's uh, 524 miles one way to la grande i i don't believe it has as big of an impact as um you would think playing at home is always more comfortable and the longer the road trip that there's some challenges with, within that but we, we have a veteran team and that's been on a lot of road games and and we did things to break it up so the travel was very good the guys uh traveled excellent the coaches staff everybody did a did a great job so we we were prepared to to play the game it 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 wasn't it wasn't the travel it was maybe the preparation leading up to it it wasn't detailed enough okay how about how about injury injury wise how did the bulldogs come out uh, healthy wise well we're a little more nicked up now in the third week of the season than normal but we've played two really tough physical games so it it's a little bit to be expected but no one's out so but the guys are playing 
hurt and it's just one thing about this game everybody hurts it doesn't matter if it's your your filmer all your manager your coaches the players the scout players everybody hurts in this in this game there's discomfort for everyone so it's really that emotional stability that you can have within yourself to to get yourself to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and still excel at a high level okay and you've got another uh, tough opponent uh, coming up uh, your next game on the road and before we get get to talking about dickens and states you know when the when the conference planners uh did the football schedule and you know hoping that they were going to play a football schedule they built in those two bye weeks with uh, the option of if you want another game you can have it and if something comes along that you need it then you've got it. And both of those instances are happening this weekend. I mean, the MSU Northern Southern Oregon game from last week postponed because of unhealthy air. And you guys picking up uh, an extra game on the way. So uh, I guess it worked. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always wanted to play Dickinson State. I mean, they're very well coached. They've got tough kids. They're very disciplined. Um, it's just always a really fun game against a really quality, prepared opponent and and it's fun to play too outside of the outside of the conference a little bit and kind of see how you match up and and that's one of the things I wanted we wanted to see with our team is you know early on in the season how how good are we you know and right now I'd say we're just good we don't we, we have potential to maybe be great but you know we're one and one we lost our first road game now we got to take another long challenging road trip we're going to see we're going to see what we're made of well, it's even longer than your Lagrand trip. You uh, one way it's five hundred and seventy-two miles to Dickinson, North Dakota. Um, you're playing the eleventh-ranked NAIA team in the country. They're coming off uh, their first game was last weekend, and they lost to NCAA Division Two Black Hill State by six. Um, there's really not a whole lot of difference between NAIA, the top level of NAIA, and NCAA Division II. The teams usually match up very, very well. So they're off with a loss, but it was a close loss. They're at home against a good team. Uh, it should be a great football game. I believe so. I, I mean, we're, we're going into it as we would any other game, you know, and uh, preparing and preparing well and working on the things that we didn't do so well last week and, and moving and keeping continuing to reinforce the things that we do well. But um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the guys are excited to play. You know, like I said, we get to play someone who goes, who wins their conference nearly every year, who goes to the playoffs nearly every year. And, and again, right, when we scheduled the game, I wanted to see what, what are we made of. We're going to find out. Well, you know, Hank Bledsoe, uh, long, long time Dickinson football coach. The field is named after him. Uh, he had that, that kind of an old fashioned, grinded out type of an offense. Now, there's been a new coach there for, what, three or four years now? Um, what's the difference in the old Dickinson state of grinding it out on the ground football to, to the new Blue Hawks? You know, it's the. You know, Pete Stanton, the head coach, is outstanding, great football coach, Baker Spartan, and he's a Blue Hawk alumni, and uh, he he has the same you know, philosophy as Hank did, you know, and again, it's it's disciplined, it's uh, it's tough, the guys are physical, they play really hard, um, they, they run their offense, they run it well, they run their defense, they run it well, so there's not a lot of tricks involved, it's just... Um, they're very detailed, focused, and disciplined in what they do. So that's how they're similar. On the flip side of it, you know, they're they're just they modernize their offense. You know, them they have good throw game and and uh, you know good zone run game and and uh, so you know play more than one wide receiver or two. You know, they they got those packages. So it, it's been modernized in that term, so to speak, modernized, but um, but still the same pride and tradition that they always had. Defensively, how, how does the Blue Hawk defense match against uh, the Montana Western offense? Yeah, I think they, they're not maybe as strong up front in terms of um, activity and speed as the other two teams we've played, but similar schematic, um, similar coverage. Schematics, have, you know, they have good corners and their safeties are really strong players and they move pretty good at linebacker, maybe not as fast in the box as the teams that we've played, but um, but physical and strong on the interior. So, 
it's a good matchup for us. Um, there'll be we will have opportunities. It's just you know, we're, are we going to be able to make the most of them? Okay, well, and then you return home after two weeks on the road. Homecoming, Hall mm-hmm. of Fame, should be a good weekend. Uh, looking forward to, uh, I th- I believe your yeah, Coach Beers, and I believe Tommy Thomas being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Uh, did you already graduate when Tommy was here? Was nope. he? I played uh, his uh, was his freshman Richard freshman year as my senior year. So that's got to be kind of fun. You can uh, reflect on Bulldog football memories. Yeah, it's it's a joy to see uh, folks come back and uh, and get put into the Hall of Fame. And then the people come back to see him. It's always fun to see old friends and share share those memories. This is a special one for me with Coach Beers going, you know, I do what I do today because of Bob Beers and Mick Delaney, and that's, uh, there's just no, there's no other way to put it that way. So it's a uh, well-deserved, um, well-deserved honor for Coach Beers. I'm, I'm excited to be there. Well, I'm going to give you a little time to think about maybe a story that you can tell us next <laughs> week uh, because, you know, I've, I've known Bob a long time too, and he's got good stories, but some of them we we can't always share. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a couple that I uh, that I always enjoy sharing about uh, about Coach Beers. He he's uh, he made an imprint on a lot of people, so it's going to be a fun weekend. Okay, Ryan. Thanks again for coming in and and visiting with about uh, Bulldog football. We look forward to next week. Uh, uh, hopefully, bringing home a, a Bulldog victory that we can talk about and and talking about our homecoming opponent. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Watch the game. It'll be. It'll be another good wild one on the road. I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to so uh, yep. Have a good weekend. Go dogs. Okay, thank you, head coach Ryan Norse, Bulldog football coach, and uh, that's it for extra point this round. Back to Jeremy.